Michelle Tafoya of NBC Sports is now joining me here with Al Michaels. Uh, before we get to this, uh, I want to, uh, I, I, while we're talking, the commissioner is, is meeting with the media, as I said, and with it potentially being a hairy situation, I put the hairiest member of the Rich Eisen Show <laughs> staff on the real-time, uh, yes. I guess, covering of this. What is, what is going on right now? Well, Patriots owner Robert Kraft said he would want an apology if the league didn't find anything. Mm -hmm. Goodell was asked that. He said, and I quote, this is my job. I represent 32 teams. I have to pursue it. He was asked if you would give an apology. If, if you would give an apology. Wrong. What else is it? What else and is then he also gonna... the league announced they are going to hire a chief medical officer to oversee injuries. A chief medical officer. Chief medical officer. And they are going to look into instant replay on penalties. Why we need that. Don't you think, Michelle Tafoya? You just rolled your eyes at that one. <laughs> well, I mean, cause, because the, 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 if a helmet hits a shoulder as opposed to a helmet. Yeah, now, in that case, you're yes, fine with that. I'm fine with that. If it's a if replay on every flag, I, we're, we're, we'll never get off the air. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, there are some I see it being valuable and some that I just, I don't. Are well, we talking every penalty? I don't think so. I, okay. Although there are people like Gruden when he was in the league and Belichick basically says, let's make it all reviewable. And even though that wouldn't mean more challenges in a coach's pocket, you'd still get the same number of them. Mike Pereira, who's on the show every Monday, says the number of times that all of them would be used would skyrocket, that coaches don't use all of their challenges every game. But if everything was challengeable, Boom. That would be through the roof. Well, if they're, uh, they're still going to have only two challenges, and you get a third if you win the first two. I, I can't see them expanding that because otherwise no, no, they would just be stopping the game every five minutes But I th or uh, less. To me, I think the helmet-to-helmet -helmet stuff. Yeah. I mean, we saw that in a big moment between Seattle and San Francisco yeah. this year where the crown yeah. of the helmet hit, hit Russell Wilson directly in the chest. Mm -hmm. That even happened in the AFC championship game and the, at the end of the first half where there was a big flag on the Colts. And Mike Carey said, a forehead to the chest will get you a flag every time, which I think is wrong if, if he is right in that instance. I wouldn't mind that, you know, instant replay yeah, on that. Well, yeah, I, I think part of this now comes out of what happened in the Detroit-Dallas playoff game, where the flag was thrown for pass interference, and then the flag was picked yeah. up yeah. without that's an explanation. Outrageous. That was outrageous. Uh, but that's why I think this now has become and will become part of the conversation and will be looked at by the competition committee, things like that. But then you start to look at the replay. Can you tell exactly when contact was made? Was the ball there? Was contact made before, before the ball was there? So, I mean, to me, um, you go back to why they put instant replay in, in the first place. And, and it, it was put in to correct the egregiously incorrect call. Mm -hmm. Now it's like everything. I know, and now we're even getting to the point when this what I think upsets people too, even though I think this is, should be replayed, these helmet to helmet stuff, I think that should absolutely be replayed, is that fans think that we're parsing too much. And that's what even deflate gate, in my mind, put it on a, a pedal of pedestal of ridiculousness for so many fans because we're even now parsing air. It that's the only way <laughs> to describe what was happening. We are parsing about the amount of air yes. in a football. And, and if you take a look at some of the, the rules, when you're reading through the rules of the NFL, right. you start to think this game is being officiated by lawyers. I mean, really, that's how we're covering ourselves on all of these rules. It, it, it sounds like legalese to a, at a certain point. One, and it's, it's, it's take some of the fun. Well, I think it takes I, some I, of the air out of the game. Yeah. Well done, I think instead of, going to, I, instead of going to New York, I don't know if the Supreme Court, the Chief Justice John Roberts is a football fan, but why don't we just have a phone line into his house, <laughs> yeah. and he could adjudicate everything. Yeah. There we go. It's just insane. I've got Al Michaels and Mattel, Michelle Tafoya here. The storylines for Super Bowl 49, Michelle, give me, give me the one that you think, uh, that w one that is your favorite going into this Honestly, game. Honestly, I just think the matchup is so interesting mm -hmm. in, in all phases that it's kind of a bummer that this deflate gate thing has been as big as it has, because if you really look at who is defending whom and how. Right. This is a fascinating matchup. And I think just the yeah. historical aspect of it, do, you know, is, is this young startup Seahawks team able to do this back to back? Or does Tom Brady get back to the promised land for the first time in a decade? You know, it's, th these are two guys with very different styles on very different teams with extremely different personalities, both going for history. And I think that part uh, has a lot of people hooked. Great personalities on both sides, but I just think if people look at the matchup breakdowns, 
You're looking at some yeah. intriguing stuff. I'm hoping Seattle puts Camp Chancellor on Gronk, and, and, and you guys just put that on a camera. Just follow that around the field. That, that is just, it's just basically like Jurassic Park. These two <laughs> monster creatures across the side, uh, across the line of scrimmage from each other. I, I would love that. That'll be a movable feast because they, they won't every time put them sure. one on one. I mean, you know, Chancellor's more of a linebacker than he is a safety. I mean, he's the eighth guy in the box. You need him down there to, to, uh, to stop the running game. I just look at this is a great chess match with two phenomenal coaches who really understand how to make adjustments, not only at halftime, but along the way. And, and I think that's fantastic. Uh, it's going to make for great television. It's going to make for, make for great talk about the, the strategy of the game. If I had to pick one thing, somebody said, what, what, what's the one thing you think will most determine this game? I think if Russell Wilson yes. has a big day running, that's huge. Because now you've got the two, you know, when you talk about the two-headed monster running back situations that teams have, but it's, it's one guy on the bench and one guy is in there. This is the two-headed monster in the game at the same time. Because we know about Lynch, and we know about what you know. We know what Russell can do throwing the ball. But if Russell, you know, ru rushes for seventy or eighty yards, and Lynch does his normal thing, wow! I just, it's been so interesting too, just talking to both of these coaches. And obviously, we're not going to say everything that they told us. But when you sit and listen to these coaches and follow how they've been dissecting mm -hmm. film, uh, it is so interesting to hear the respect and to hear the chess match already beginning. It's awesome. It's great, and when you, and in terms of what you were saying, Al, um, which which coach has his ends on on defense more prepared situationally to keep a quarterback in the pocket and not have that quarterback break contain better than the Patriots? They usually are so disciplined when it comes to that. Well, I think you know with with Belichick, he comes at you so many different ways offensively yeah. and defensively. You know, look at kind of like that amoeba defense that he runs offensively. We know the you know. The stuff that he's pulled recently, I mean, Solder catches a touchdown pass. We know about the Vereen ineligible thing. The Seahawks are far more predictable. Mm -hmm. The Seahawks just kind of line up pretty much the same way, especially defensively, and let their guys do their thing. Yeah. You don't see a lot of moving around on defense with them. You know, the corners are going to be probably one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to have a four-man front. you got the linebackers there with, you know, Wagner and K.J. Wright. Uh, you know, Chancellor's going to come down into the box. Those guys just... They do their job, and they do it without a lot of bells and whistles. Yeah, it's not real exotic, but yeah. it's incredibly well executed. Yes. Man, I wish we would have been talking about uh, PSIs and whether well, we Marshawn Lynch wasn't talking uh, instead of this X's and O's stuff. There's I a mean, lot of hot air about it. There's, it's, it was truly all about air oh, this week. Air, whether yeah. enough was coming out of a guy's mouth or if there was enough inside of football, it, it's sort of right. ridiculous. It, it, was, it felt absurd. Yeah, I know. I, it certainly yeah. was. It, and, and it's interesting you said that about Cam Chancellor being a linebacker because Marshall Falk told me last week, and he is easily the most knowledgeable football guy that I've ever been around, saying that Cam Chancellor may be the first guy in the history of the NFL that when he gets later in his career, moves down to linebacker from safety, as opposed to the other way around. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 that's, and that's what yeah. I'm, I'm so much looking forward to. Thanks for coming out here Thanks today. Thanks for having have a Thank great you, catch. Rich. Have a great catch. Can I take some of this you, with? Which, which, which <laughs> elixir would you take? I, I would like the uh, deflating power. It be, it's BB's deflating powder. Oh, I'm, I miss that. Not just any deflating powder. No, this is powder. not just any that's deflating powder. That's a special powder. Eisen elixir. My is favorite it? one, again, that's on here is Cutler's Tincture of Apathy. Which it, is it gluten free, though? That's <laughs> the question. <laughs> of course, they all are, Al. You know the way well, we roll. about Jill Costas, Bob's wife. Well, that's, that's right. Definitely gluten free. Wow. Have a great cast. Yep. Have a great cast. Okay. Uh, Al Michaels, Michelle Thank Tafoya, you. wrapping up hour number two. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On audience.